Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rams Revealed. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving weekend. My name is JB Long. As you know, the Rams are back at SoFi Stadium this weekend for the first time in a month when they play host to the Jacksonville Jaguars. To preview that one and to tell us a bit about his journey to the NFL, here is rookie cornerback Robert Rochelle. Robert, welcome home. How you doing? Thank you for having me. Was it a good flight home from Green Bay? Everything goes smoothly? Uh, yeah, I slept the whole way here. So, yeah, it was, it was a good flight. It was smooth. All right, that's the way to do it. And and I apologize. I mean, I'm sorry to bring you in during a three-game losing streak. This is not the way I wanted to start this conversation. How are you and everyone holding up? It wasn't going fine. We just keep pressing forward. That's just our mindset right now. Yeah. So at the outset of your NFL career, you've seen, what, a 3-0 and start, a four-game winning streak, some Super Bowl hype along the way, blockbuster trades, free agent signings. Is this one of those life-comes-at-you-fast moments, Robert? Yeah, it's definitely, I definitely experienced a lot uh, very quick. So uh, just being able to see that and go through all those type of situations, you know, it just add more like knowledge and wisdom to future, future situations. Yeah, I, I feel like that's true, right? You get it all out of the way in your rookie yeah. season. Nothing can surprise you, hopefully, moving forward. Right. right. Uh, so Shreveport, Louisiana to Lambeau Field. Mm -hmm. Did you take a moment pregame to soak in that place? Oh, yeah, that place was crazy. Just being in the atmosphere and that environment well, you know, where they say football started it and how it originated from. So it's just one of those spots where I was just amazed just to be standing on that field and playing there. So it was just a surreal moment. Aside from SoFi, the buildings you've been in so far as a pro, what's your favorite? Uh, I like Seattle. I like their, I like their uh, and 49ers. I like both of those. I like both of their stadiums. All right. I hope you get to make the full lap around all 31 yeah. opposing venues before your playing yeah. day is done. Uh, game time temps yesterday were below freezing. I wonder from your part of the country, how many cold weather games had you played in prior to last night? Man, probably like one or two, not too many. You know, I don't really experience too many cold games. I was telling some of my teammates that uh, prior to the game, I'm like, I ain't really played in a cold game like <laughs> this before, really with the, these type of temps. So it was something new to me as well. So just being out there experiencing it. it was fun, though, playing in the cold. Once they teed it up and kicked it off, was it any different? No, nah, no, nah, it was still the same thing. So you didn't get to play on defense, but you did pounce on that fumbled punt. What was that moment like? Uh, It was just it was just something that happened. You know, I was just right place, right time, and I was just – had to make that play, had to grab that ball right there for the team just to get us back on track. You know so It was just something that, that happened, really. Yeah. I mean, that's life in the ball, that third yeah. phase, right? You got to prepare and, and run down every rep as if the ball is going to be on the ground, right? If you don't have to make a tackle, maybe you get to recover a fumble. Right. Exactly. In those special teams meetings, meeting rooms, I know how professional, how hard you guys are working. Uh, it's not going your way right now. How tough is that room taking that third phase? Uh, we just stay staying locked in on the task and what we're trying to be as a unit. Uh, we're trying to stay together as a team. Uh, most importantly, just so that everything will come together as one and just put put our best foot forward every Sunday. Hmm. You don't feel like anyone's gripping too tightly trying to make things right, do you? No, I feel like it's all just coming together. I feel like it's all coming together as one. All right. I'm looking forward to uh, the special yeah. team's best performances down the stretch here. As for the corner rotation, look, we know it's ever evolving, right? Not as many opportunities for you now that Darius Williams is healthy and coming off the bye. Dante Dion has carved out a nice role. As you bide your time, what are you learning from the likes of pros like Jalen, D. Will, Double D? Well, just watching how they play situations, just watching uh, things, just just how they practice. You know, their their body mechanics, their situation, situational masters, how they be in every situation and how they perform. Uh, down in and down out, just watching everything about them, technique to down the field, playing the ball to just in the meeting rooms, just listening and hearing what they're saying. So just trying to learn as a whole. To help build my knowledge and you know my wisdom around football, Robert, I've been observing this maybe since OTAs, definitely since training camp. You're really well liked. Like that's the vibe that I get is that as a rookie, you were embraced. Which teammates have become close friends for you as well? I'm really close friends with everybody. Uh, I'm, I'm one of those guys who just you know I, I ain't picking and choosing who I talk to specifically. I, I interact with everybody. Uh, I'm real close with the DBs though. We stay here over the summer. You know we really. Got closer as a group, really hung out together, really did, uh, you know, like one of the type of things to build our relationship on and off the field. And th those guys are probably the closest, closest to me for sure. Is it like being a freshman and showing up to a college roster and not really knowing most of the group around you? Yeah, it definitely would it feel like at first, yeah. But they they welcome me in and, and I'm part of the fam. Yeah. 
So when all said and done, it'll be 20 games, at least regular season, preseason and regular season. Does that seem like a gauntlet for a rookie who's only experienced high school and college to this point in your life? Uh, yeah, it's definitely a different type of mindset you got to have for sure. You know, going in, you got to have a kind of longevity mindset, take care of your body, you know, get rest, you know, eat well, uh, make sure you're getting some, you know, just make sure you stay honed in and locked in the task at hand because, you know, repetition gets weary sometimes and you can't get, get caught being weary. You got to always be ready. Mm. So it's mental endurance as much as physical. Yeah, yeah it's just, just as much mental. It's way more mental than it is physical. Really? Mm. Yeah. I'd love it if you would tell us a bit about Robert Rochelle coming out of high school. Uh, did you have any FBS offers? Why UCA? Uh, coming out of high school, I was a four-star, I mean, a four, four-sport athlete. I uh, played basketball, ran track, played football, uh, tried baseball. You know, I really, really stick to baseball, but I tried it. <laughs> um, and coming out, I was uh, recruited by a few schools, Houston, uh Lafayette, ULL, U, U, uh, Monroe, uh, a couple schools in Louisiana. Um, UCA wasn't around at the time when I was going through. I was talking to Tulane, uh, talked to a couple D2 schools as well. Um, really just talking to a lot of schools at the time. So then football season ended, which I, I didn't get injured playing football. I got injured playing basketball. Mm. At the beginning of the season, playing basketball early December. Um, What's crazy, my coach had just told me not to play basketball. He was like, you don't need to be playing. We need you to go and take care of your body so you'll be ready going into college, working on these type of things, this, this, and this. But me, being a kid growing up, having hoop dreams, I'm going to go play basketball. Went to play basketball a couple games into the season. Uh, went up for a rebound. Guy came down on my knee uh, late. My knee hyperextended, partially tore my patella tendon. And when I did that, when it finally got out, uh, but when we figured out what the injury was, because I, I was trying to run and, you know, I really couldn't really have no stability. But when we found out what the injury was, it was there. And then it got out. A lot of schools kind of bagged off. Uh, so my college dreams right then, my football dreams in general as an athlete was over. You know, I'm, so I'm looking at like, damn, I'm probably not play sports ever again. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, um, people, a lot of people saying I wouldn't never be like back to myself. I'm better run, jump high. No, I wouldn't be able to do none of those things. So uh, just facing that adversity right there early on, you know, it kind of molded me to who I am today, uh, made me approach our situation different than like a day before signing day. I ain't talked to no schools, ain't talked to nobody. I'm just going through surgery, rehab every day uh, at the hospital. And UCA called me and was like, uh, we're going to take a chance on you. And they said, it's going to bring me in. I went down there, seen, went on my official visit and everything. Uh, as soon as I got down there, you know, I played wide receiver, running back. I played that in high school. I played offense. Got down there, and my coach pulled me to the side in the meeting, and he was like, um, if you want to make money playing this sport, you need to play D play DB. Uh, I looked at my mom. I said, I said, okay. I said, I'm going to do it. Changed my position right there. Uh, six years later, I'm here now. What an amazing story. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about the basketball injury, but I'm glad to know just how deep your hoot, hoop heart runs because I want to ask you about basketball before we're done here. So how long did it take you to get back physically? Like when did you feel like you were back at full performance as a collegiate? Uh, so I registered my first year, just was getting more strength, uh, learning a little bit more about the position as well. So I was learning the position and doing rehab at the same time, mm -hmm. you know, just going back and forth. Uh, it took me that whole year. Uh, started playing my sophomore year, uh, just started getting real special teams, then slowly got into uh, defense. Then my junior year kind of progressed. You know, that's probably my best year. Then my, my senior year, uh, just put more on film, put more on tape, and then that's how I went. Yeah, that senior year, like so many of your classmates, disrupted. I, I understand the schedule that you had to go out and play. One of those games crazy. ended up being against Trey Lance, right? Mm -hmm. When you went up against him, and by the way, you performed very well, a couple of pass breakups, limited some of his damage. Are you looking across the line of scrimmage like that guy's a future pro too? No, nah, yeah, it was that, that was that was probably one of the funnest games of my career. Uh just knowing how the hype of the game and uh going against a great athlete uh in himself, in himself, and just being able to experience the atmosphere playing like that place that probably was the biggest game of my college career other than playing at West Kentucky, but that probably was the biggest game of my career. So yeah, definitely looked like across the line seeing him was was great.
Robert, where along that pathway are you thinking I might be able to make money, like your coach said, doing this as a living someday? Uh, so after like my junior year, uh, my mother, she had a bad car wreck. She had like a, she almost lost her life. And to this day, she can't work anymore. She's disabled. Uh, she broke her hip, her shoulder. So, you know, she can't really like stand up to go to work. She really can't walk that long, all those type of things. So when that moment right there happened, that was like right before the season. And I just talked to my coach and I was like, coach, this has got to be it. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I can't come back another year. My family, my mother can't take care of us anymore. She can't go to work, take care of my siblings. So it's in my hands. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like it was just that moment of, is either now or never, you know what I'm saying? It's either now I put my name out here now and I try to see what I can get. And that's when I put my name out there and they told me to go back to school. But I just told my mom right there in that situation, I was like, uh, we just need one more year. Just give me one year. She toughed it out, still worked on a broken hip, uh, in pain, went through all things she went through it. We just went through it as a family. And, and now we in a better situation than we was. That's remarkable. Thank you for sharing that. I promise. Let's circle back to your mother, your story, her influence on your life and your career. Um, but just to continue chronologically, you deliver on that promise. You get a senior bowl invite, a combine invite, knowing your physical attributes. Did you know that once you had put the film down that you were going to test well and that teams would be interested? Yeah, I had been doing like testing and running and all my life. Uh, this training like I was a huge track guy so running and all those type of things I really didn't feel like I had a problem with so I feel like I was missing prepared in the area and I was just ready I just had to had to be ready stay ready are you aware of how the Rams kind of ran some of your metrics and that you fell into this very narrow category that included just a small handful of players before you including Jalen Ramsey and Derwin James yeah, when I seen it, it had, I, I never knew that until I had, until when I got here and they had handed me like a printout of what how they went through uh, recruiting or getting me here. And I was like, dang, I didn't know that. Yeah. But uh, it surprised me as well. Does that kind of reinforce the confidence that you have in yourself and your ability? Like, hey, God gave me this skill set. Now it's up to me to deliver and to make the most of it and to become a player like Jalen or Derwin. Definitely, most definitely it did. Just definitely made me just enhance them and, and put more work behind it. Hmm. So you get drafted by the Rams. And maybe when we talk about your mother, we can revisit what that moment was. But along your journey to try and carve out your role on this team, you have a wrist injury in camp as you're trying to get up to speed, learn the system, make an impression on your on your coaches. In the context of that basketball injury that you suffered, did you lean on that experience? What are, you, what are your recollections of that injury? And How'd you make sure you didn't lose any ground? Uh, just stay grounded. I didn't let myself get inside my head of saying I'm losing a step, not being out there, or uh, this is going to be detrimental to what I have moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, I just had text the coach and just told him, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Just for, because going through those type of injuries and uh, by yourself anyway, I'm out of California by myself and yeah. having coaches and people check in on you and make sure you're fine. You know, this just helped me get through what I was dealing with, my teammates and the coaches. And I just told them, thank you. Thank you all for just supporting me through the time where I didn't know where support was going to come from. So it was just one of those situations where I had to lean on other people. Wow. It didn't take you long to get back. I remember that joint practice. I was there that day in Thousand Oaks when you get the pick off Derek Carr and the Raiders with the cast on. Yeah. How big of a moment was that for you preseason? Uh, it definitely was just a uh, uh, I says, you know how you need some things just for confidence, just to let yourself yeah. know, like, OK, you still you still can do everything that you think you can. And that was just one of those moments. I mean, the team erupted around you, too, yeah. uh, to talk about the friendships that you had formed already. The reaction was were really incredible. Um, and there's kind of a through line then to that moment uh, at the Meadowlands in New York. You get your first career NFL interception. And now knowing just a little bit more about your mother, she was in attendance that day, Robert. Yep, she was. What did that mean to you? Man, that was that was everything because at first I was weary about her coming from Texas all the way to New York. She all the way out here with no one. And then some just told me to be like, come on, you can come. She came and the game turned out to be a game for the best. Wow. Do you mind me asking what's her name? Uh, LaBrenta Rochelle. And how's her recovery going? Uh, her recovery is fine. She'll have surgery here soon. She has, She's too young to have hip surgery right now, so she's just kind of like dealing with it right now. But she's just making the most of every situation. And you said earlier she was working to support you and your siblings. How many siblings do you have? I have two sisters and one brother. Wow. 
And so as you mature into a professional football player, is it your hope to take some of those burdens off of your mother and kind yeah. of lead the family that way? Yes, definitely. Uh, my sisters are there in college right now. My younger brother is is going to high school. So um, it's just one of those situations of just being there when needed or just being the guy because there is no one else. You know, so it's just us, just family. So just staying tight, staying locked in. Hey, thank you for sharing that. I really appreciate it. One other follow up on the interceptions. You mentioned that you were a skill player, right? Coming up through football, quarterback, receiver, you played some hoops. You know, some guys end up on that side of the ball because it doesn't really pan out for them as a pass catcher. You feel like you have receiver ball skills, though, playing corner. Am I right? Yes, yeah, definitely. OK, so you got your first. It won't be your last. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, Robert, we appreciate your time. Let's wrap up with a closing segment we go through with uh, all of your teammates who are on the Rams Reveal podcast. It's called Three and Out. Uh, three final questions. There are no wrong answers, but if you get them right, I'll make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf. OK, let's do it. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong, but to your teammates and friends, your scooter, right? Mm -hmm. Scooter, scooter, scooter. Yeah. Scooter. What can you tell us about that nickname? Where did it come from? Uh, it came from my grandmother. Uh, as a kid, it scooted across the floor. It kind of stuck with me. I didn't crawl. So it just came scooter. OK. And is it reserved for your kind of inner circle or do you want fans? And no, every, everyone calls me. OK. Yeah. All right, so I can workshop something here. Like if, you know, Randall Cobb fumbles next time and instead of diving on it, you know, Scooter scoops and scores like that kind of, that's yeah. good by you. I got your permission. For sure. All right, excellent. Question number two. Uh, I checked this morning. Scotty Pippen is now 56 years old, okay? Yeah. So if I gave you a game of one-on-one -on -one between two Central Arkansas notable alumni, first to 11, win by two, what's the final score? I'd give him a bucket for sure. Oh, you're only letting him make one bucket. No, no, no. I'm saying I will score on him. Like I will, I will get some. I will, oh, you would give him a bucket. Yeah, I'll put some points for sure. But I had to play some, I had to play some some defense because he'll be trying to use his height on me and all that. <laughs> but uh I feel like I'll hold him off. I feel like all I'll right. hold him off. All right, you get to the finish line first. How's your game? A little rusty? Yeah, it's a little rusty, but you know, it ain't nothing to bring it back out. Yeah, well, you're not 50. You know, I know he feel the same way. So you got some working advantages there. Uh, last thing on this Rams Reveal podcast, as we look ahead to Jacksonville on Sunday, going down to Inglewood, it's been a while. I wonder what's your favorite part about showing up to SoFi Stadium on game day? Man, the little the, the ring they show all like the games and stuff on the screen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's crazy. I just like looking up at it. It's a great view. This is the, probably the best part of the stadium to me. The you infinity know, screen. Is play, yeah, the, the best place to watch red zone, isn't it? This place is it's nice. It's definitely nice, especially pregame. Well, it's great getting to know you a little bit better. Thank you. I know coming off a difficult loss for spending some time with us and letting us connect with your personal story. It just uh, gives us such a profound appreciation for the work that you're putting in and all the great highlights that are I know are ahead of you, Robert. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. Appreciate you having me. All right. Have a great week. Good luck against the Jazz. For Robert Rochelle, I'm JB Long, and this is Rams Reveal.